There's an ugly rumor floating around that the Retroid Pocket 3 isn't good for PSP. It's a lie, I tell you! This thing is a great PSP machine, as long as you choose the right settings. What are those secret settings that let you run any PSP game at good frame rates at 2x resolution? Well, I'm gonna tell you in this video. So, uh, yeah, let's, um, let, let's do that. Hello there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video, and subscribing, <laughs> that's always nice. So we're here to talk about playing PSP games on the Retroid Pocket 3. I freaking love the RP3, I said so in my review. Have you watched that yet? It's a good overview of the device itself and how it performs on lots of systems. I'll link to that in the description below if you want to check it out, after this video of course. So PSP on the RP3. Uh, let's get this out of the way right at the start. Yes, you can play any PSP game upscaled to at least 2x resolution, without frame skip for the most part, and without significant stutters. With just a little bit of tinkering, PSP runs great on the RP3. I haven't found a single game that doesn't work well. It's actually my favorite system to play on this thing. I didn't own a PSP back in the day. It actually was released back in 2005, almost 17 years ago. I was in college at the time. I studied art. And now I'm 40 and live in my mom's basement. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah, when the PSP was released, it felt like a device from the future. I remember people saying, it's like having a PS2 in your pocket. It was going to be a real competitor to Nintendo, which had dominated the handheld market for, like, forever. There was really nothing else other than the Nintendo systems if you wanted to play games on the bus, or while you waited at the doctor's office to finally get that wart on your eyelid removed. You gotta understand how crazy the concept of a powerful, portable 3D system was back in 2005. Heck, even the idea of a device that could play movies was a big deal back then. I had a Nintendo DS at the time, which was a great system that I loved. I'm thankful that I didn't miss out on the DS because there, there was a ton of amazing games on that system. But it didn't really scratch my itch for hardcore gaming on the go. And since I already had a DS, I couldn't justify the expense of a PSP considering I could barely afford to buy groceries, even though I really, really wanted one. I told myself I'd buy a used one someday, yeah, but I never did. That's a, that's, so that's an entire generation of portable gaming that I missed out on. But fast forward to 2022, and now we have devices like the Retroid Pocket 3 that's only 120 bucks, with a pocket-friendly form factor that can play every single PSP game upscaled with enhanced resolution and save state support on a big beautiful widescreen display, and the storage to hold hundreds of games, and suddenly I'm not so bummed that I missed out on this generation of PSP games, because I get to enjoy them now on the, this RP3 which is basically a PSP HD. I played a few PSP games in modern days, but since I got the RP3, the, the PSP has been my main system. I've discovered a, a bunch of PSP games that I love, and I'm realizing now how big the library is, and how many great games there actually are. But we can only enjoy them if we can get them running good. That's what I'm going to show you how to do today, for whatever game you want to play. How to go through the options and find the best settings for your game. That'll be the first part. And then the second part, I'll show you the settings that I chose for a bunch of the games that I have installed. So what do we have to do? Well, let's start right at the beginning. 13.77 billion years ago, there was a big bang, and then the universe experienced a period of rapid inflation, and the first light elements were formed in a process called nucleosynthesis. It took about 100 billion years for the first stars to be formed. No, not that beginning. So start at the beginning of the, the PSP setting stuff, you nerd. Oh, uh, right. Oh, okay, so as you may or may not know, on the RP3, we're going to be using the PPSS PP emulator. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, whenever I say that name for the first time, I always find it so funny. My inner child cracks up inside whenever he gets to say PP. <laughs> um, so in the PPSS PP emulator, we can launch our game and start playing right away. And most games work just fine like this, with PPSS PP's default defaults. But there's a chance your game won't run well. So as a first step, let's set some new default settings that should work well for most PSP games. And then later we can make specific tweaks on a per game basis. The way that we change the default settings is we just open up PPSSPP and go to the settings over here on the right. Whatever we change here will be saved as the default. I'll start just by telling you what we want the default to be, and then, then in a bit I'll explain how to adjust stuff that'll change the performance that you're getting. In the settings here, there are two main areas that we'll be changing stuff in, the graphics category and the system category. 
you can change above the left. Under graphics, this is where we'll get most of our options. Here's the settings that you'll want to enable for the graphics. Now go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Again, I'll explain later about what, what tweaking this stuff does. So those are the graphics settings and now we'll see the system settings. Here they are again on the screen. The only stuff you're changing in the system category is the stuff under the emulation section. After you adjust your settings, just back out of the menu and it'll automatically save your settings. And well, that, that's it. You're done. Those are the, the best default settings that'll give you the best performance across the board. So when I fire up an easy to emulate game like Mega Man Powered Up, you can see that the performance is perfect. The game is playing great without any noticeable graphics glitches and no stuttering in either the gameplay or the audio. And as you can see by the FPS display at the top, we're running at basically full speed. And also here in Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, it's running great at the default settings. When we look up at the FPS display in the top right, you can see that we're not running at exactly full speed. It sometimes dips down into the 99% figures. But keep in mind that the percentage is just a percentage of your F FPS. A single percent isn't even enough to drop a single frame in a 60 frame cycle. So as long as it's running above like 97 or 98%, you, you won't have any issues or frame drops. And honestly, the frame data that's on the screen is only part of the picture. It's useful for testing, but don't put too much stock in it. If your game's running basically fine, just ignore that FPS or turn it off and you'll have a good time without stressing about the performance. So that's well and good for the majority of PSP games, but what do we do when our games do not give us this sort of performance? Well, we need to tweak the settings for that game. For example, I'm gonna fire up John Dark. Who are you? My name is John Dark. As in John Dark? The French name for Joan of Arc? No, nothing like that. And yeah, it's not running great. Lots of stutters. Well, we're running at less than 50% speed. So what I'll do is walk you through the steps that I usually do to troubleshoot the performance on a per game basis. And spoiler alert, I've been able to get every single PSP game working great at 2x resolution, without frame skip except for one single game, and no significant stutters, following this method that I'll show you now. First, before you adjust any settings, what you want to do is create a custom config for the game that you're playing. If you don't do that, then any settings you adjust will be applied as the new defaults, and what works well in one game might not work well for another game. So to create a custom config for this game, while the game is open, I'm going to open the PPSS PP menu by pressing the left trigger and go over here to Create Game Config. Now, any settings that we adjust will only be applied to this game, so we can tinker away without having to worry that we're going to mess up stuff in other games. So let's see what we can do about this performance. Some of these settings don't make much of a difference, but some of them make a huge difference. And it's just a matter of trying stuff out and seeing what happens. Let's go through them in the order that I use when I'm doing this. The first thing, the very first thing before anything else is to switch the rendering mode to skip buffer effects. Now, some games use this frame buffer to do things to the image before it's given to you. For example, here in God of War, as you can see, once we disable the buffer, we lose the post-processing effects like the colorization and the blur, but we also lose the sky and the lighting, because in this game, the skybox is applied on the frame buffer rather than being rendered in the game. These are the tricks that developers use to get better performance. This setting is by far the biggest impact on performance, and some games rely on this a lot and are literally unplayable without it, but some games don't use it at all. So if you can get the game running with buffered effects turned off, then 95% of the time, that's, that's all you need to do. Now, sometimes a game won't run without buffered effects, or it'll just look super weird. For example, here in Outrun, when we disable the buffered effects, the, the game runs much better, but we lose our ground layer. So the next step here, if going with non-buffered rendering doesn't work in OpenGL, it, then we're going to switch the game engine to Vulkan, and th then it works. We can run non-buffered and without the graphics glitches that we were getting at OpenGL. Generally speaking, OpenGL will usually give you better performance, uh, with a few exceptions, but sometimes Vulkan gives you better compatibility when the engine gets weird. So the hierarchy of performance would be like this. OpenGL buffered, then Vulkan unbuffered, then OpenGL buffered, and then Vulkan buffered. 
I should mention that when you switch the engine, you'll be warned that you have to restart the game. Th this is fine. Just make sure that you save your state before you restart the game. And then you can change your setting. And then after you restart, you can load up your state and be right where you left off. However, here in John Dark, when we switch off the buffer, we get no image at all. So this game obviously requires buffered rendering. So that's no good. However, when we go with Vulcan buffered, we actually get better performance than OpenGL buffered, which is pretty rare, but that, that's what this game likes, so we'll just leave it at that. One final step in this section, you can try to toggle this simulate block transfer effects option, but it, it doesn't impact much visually. The next section is frame skipping. We're hoping to avoid this entirely. I don't have a single game that I personally have frame skipping turned on for, so let's skip this and come back to it only if we need it. Same thing with the rendering resolution. Again, not necessary to even touch this. I guarantee you'll be able to run any game at 2x resolution or your money back. The next performance tweaks that we can do are all here, under the performance section. So, some have more of an impact, but when I'm adjusting the settings, I just go through them one by one. I'll pick a demanding area of the game where I can have a static camera without much changing. I'll take note of the game FPS, the game speed. Then I'll go in here, toggle one of the options, and then go back to the game and see if it did, made a difference. And if yes, I'll leave it off and continue. If no, then I'll go back and toggle it back to the default and then continue. Go through all these checkboxes in the performance section and see if you can find which ones make a difference. It'll be different on a per game basis, by the way. Some games, some of these settings won't change anything, but in some games they'll be huge. Let's go back to John Dark. These settings right here, render duplicate frames, hardware transform, and software skidding. These are the big ones. These three alone are the key to getting this game running perfect. See, we went from under 50% speed before up to 100%. Oh, and one more thing in this section is this spline bezier curves option. If your game runs fine, you can turn this up to high, and a few of the objects might have more polygons and look smoother. There are a few more settings though, so let's keep going. The next section, texture scaling. This is for making your games look better by upscaling the game's textures with some sharpening. If you get a game that runs perfect and you want to improve the way it looks, uh, play with this stuff. I never bother though because I rarely notice a difference. This stuff here under texture filtering doesn't do much to help the performance and generally deviating away from these settings makes the game look worse. So just leave this alone unless you're desperate. This option here, lower resolution for effects, that can be turned up to aggressive, but sometimes if you're getting weird graphical glitches or artifacts, you'll need to turn this off. And th th that's all you're going to want to tweak on this page. If you're still getting some poor performance after all that, then there's one more category of settings. It's sort of hidden because you have to click the system category on the left. In here, you can scroll down to the emulation section. These settings usually don't help much, but every now and then, they can help a ton. The first thing you'll want to try is toggling the checkbox options. If none of these do anything, then you can change the IO timing method. But honestly, the clock and memory and storage speed on the RP3 are fine for PSP, so this stuff usually doesn't make a difference. The only thing that can be huge on this page is the emulated CPU clock speed. The PSP ran at 333 MHz. This isn't overclocking or underclocking the Retroid Pocket 3, by the way. This is just how the clock of the emulation is emulated. So since the clock speed of the PSP is 333, try some values below that, then try some above that, and try at least one value that's double the base clock speed, which is 666. The mark of the beast. There's a good chance that it won't make a difference, but it can, so just give it a try. If you've done all this stuff, then you should be able to play the game you want at 2x resolution without any frame skip or hacky stuff. And you should be getting a near perfect experience in the vast majority of your games and a nearly perfect experience in the occasional game. For example, here in Outrun 2006, I can play with my optimal settings, which I'll show you in a minute, and it works great like 99% of the time. However, very rarely, at maybe like one point in a level or something, I do get a tiny bit of audio stuttering. I played a ton of this game and honestly, the, the tiny amount of stuttering doesn't bother me in the slightest. But if it bothers you and you've gone through all the possible settings with a fine tooth comb and you just can't get it running at 100% speed the entire time, then you'll need to resort to using a frame skip. In Outrun, there's one point in this level that gives me a little bit of a stutter. Did you hear that? It was barely noticeable, but it's there. So if that's going to drive you nuts, that's a deal breaker for you, then you can enable frame skip. 
If you set the frame skip options to frame skip one and change the type to percent of FPS and then toggle auto frame skip, you'll have the frame skip kick in a very minimal amount and only when you're in those stuttery times. So in that section of Outrun, you can see that I get through it fine without it, the, the audio stutter. I personally would rather have a tiny audio stutter than inconsistent frame rate. I notice the frame rate dips a lot more than I notice the micro stutter. I don't play with frame skip in any game at all, and I don't think it's needed, but I'll leave that up to you. There is one more performance related issue that I want to address, and that's lag. Sometimes you can get a game working great, but you're experiencing a, a level of input lag that's noticeable. You know, in like a game that, you know, like a fast Twitch game or something, there is something you could do about that. There's a few key settings that you could toggle that affect input lag. Those are buffer graphics commands in the performance section, and the IO timing method and force real clock sync options in the emulation section. So try toggling those and see if you can get better input lag without affecting the performance. And because I love you so much, I have a gift for you. I made a cheat sheet. This tells you the best default settings, which settings to try tweaking first, which to try last, which ones to don't make a difference, which ones to never touch, and which ones to adjust for input lag. I'll include a link to this in the description below, so make sure you save this video or bookmark it so that you can come back and grab that cheat sheet or rewatch the video to remember how to do all this stuff. And uh, that's all there is to it. When you find a game that doesn't work well at the default settings, first just create a custom config and then try to toggle the buffer effects, try to switch the engine, and then try the, the performance options, and then, then the additional graphic settings, and then the system settings. I've tested over 60 PSP games and 9 out of 10 times I'm fine with to run with a default, but on those rare games that don't run at full speed on the default settings, just a minute, a minute or two of toggling graphic settings is all I need to get full speed emulation without resorting to lowering the resolution or using frame skip. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't address the elephant in the room. The stupid elephant with pale skin and red tattoos that smells like the Greek god of war. <laughs> this game, everyone always wants to know how it runs. You'd swear that freaking everyone who plays with these devices just plays a ton of God of War on the PSP, the way everyone goes on about it. Well, I'll tell you right now, you'll need to do something special to get it working well. But you can get it running, and it runs great. There's an extra step. We need to apply a custom cheat code that will lock the frame rate at 30 FPS. This is better than frame skip because it's a constant 30 FPS. You won't get those wild swings and huge dips. And the performance is, is better too. So here's how to get the cheat set up. You need to enable cheats in the PPSSPP menu under the system category. Then start the game that you want to do the cheat for and then exit the game. This will create the cheat directory that you'll add the cheat to. Then you'll need to access the files. If your PSP files are, are on a memory card like mine are, then you can just shove this in your computer. Otherwise you'll need to connect your device to your PC with a USB. In your ROMs directory, in the PSP directory, there's a new directory called PSP and in here there's a cheats folder. The cheats for each game are kept in an I&I and I file. And lucky for you, I've done all the hard work already for you. I already made the cheat files for all the God of War games. I'll include a link in the description to the files that you need. Just drop everything from this zip into your cheats folder and you'll be good to go. So now that we have our cheat file added, let's get into God of War and turn it on. So we'll enable the cheat via the cheat menu and then we'll need to change the game clock to over 666. I'm gonna go with like 700 something. I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Then we need to exit the game and restart the game. Once we get into the game fresh with our new cheat at clock speed, hey, look at that. We're running at 30 frames per second consistently, 100% speed more or less. We do get a few rare audio stutters, but barely any. And they're so infrequent, you can just ignore them. And like I said before, if those really bother you, then just enable the auto frame skip. I played through the first level of the game with these settings and the cheat applied, and I didn't need any frame skip at all. The same method works for both Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, by the way. And there is one other special game, <laughs> Killzone. This game straight up doesn't work. There, there's nothing you could do about it. It's not an issue with the Retroid Pocket 3 or the settings or anything. It's a literally an incompatibility with this game and the rendering engines that we have here. 
So this, this game is just straight up not going to work no matter what you do. It's just broken on emulation on this hardware. All right, so with all that boring technical stuff out of the way, let's play some games. Real quick, I'll throw up some gameplay footage on the screen, and for any game that required a custom config, I'll show the settings that I used. For the most part, the games work fine on the defaults. I have over 60 games installed, and only about 20 needed custom configs. Oh, by the way, I recorded the gameplay here using a video capture device. I won't talk over top of the gameplay so that you get a good feel for how the games actually play. I'll check back with you after the gameplay, so feel free to skip ahead if you don't care about seeing the game performance. Okay, we're good with that.
I've had a great time testing PSP on the RP3. I've gone on a bit of a download spree to fill this thing with PSP games. I even ordered a bigger memory card, literally just for PSP games. Lots of these games I've played other versions of in the past, and it's nice to be able to play them here because they run so well. For example, I played a bunch of Ace Combat on my, at my buddy's house on the PS2. And this PSP version seems pretty good. Assassin's Creed played all those games. This one on the PSP isn't, isn't particularly good. It's kind of cool that there is an open world Assassin's Creed game on the PSP, but I'm not going to bother playing this one. I give God of War a hard time because I'm frustrated that reviewers always discount PSP on these devices entirely if God of War doesn't work. But honestly, it's a really good game. I think I'm going to play some more Ghost of Sparta. That one appeals to me more. The Grand Theft Auto games are really good on the PSP. I drove around in Vice City stories for a while, just listening to those 80s jams on the radio, killing innocent pedestrians for no reason. It felt like a legit GTA experience. I played Chinatown Wars on the Nintendo DS uh, back in the day. It's a great game, and it looks and plays much better here, but I'm not going to bother with it again because I already beat it. There are a lot of other great games here. <laughs> that Katamari game is actually really fun. I always love these games. They're so freaking ridiculous. I don't do drugs, but if I did, I'd totally do drugs while playing Katamari. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker seemed uh, pretty good. I don't really like the Metal Gear series, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I, I know probably lots of you guys love it, and honestly, I can see why. But when it comes to stealth games, I've always been more of a splinter cell and thief kind of guy. I got the English translated version of Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, which is a series that I, I really loved. I played the, a ton of Monster Hunter Try on the Wii. Like, a freaking ton. I played online and everything. That was my main game for a while. I played Monster Hunter 4 on the 3DS, and I played through the whole game there. I also played a bit of Monster Hunter World, but I didn't really let myself get sucked into it. I might play more of this one on the PSP, because I hear it's a really good Monster Hunter game, and visually, it's freaking beautiful. And I like beautiful things. Speaking of beautiful things, here's Tomb Raider Legend. This game was running well, but there's one point where the controls weren't working. I had to press a button, and it straight up wouldn't press it. Every, I even tried to enable the on-screen controls, and it wouldn't work there, so I couldn't get past this point of the game. So I don't know what's up with that. I installed a cheat for a Tomb Raider anniversary that lets me use the right thumbstick to control the camera, but this game, I, I, I did have to turn on frame skip because it ran totally fine the vast majority of the time, but every now and then, the, the frames would dip down and I'd notice the stuttering. This game ran at 60 FPS, so I just locked it at 30 with a frame skip of 1. This is, this is the only game that I bothered doing that, though. There are a bunch of racing games, and they all run great, although most of them required some custom settings. Asphalt, Burnout, Motor Storm, Need for Speed Most Wanted, Outrun, Ridge Racer, Split Second, Wipeout Pure. Racing games in particular are t a ton of fun to play on the RP3 because of the solid analog stick and that big beautiful screen. And role-playing games! That John Dark game seems amazing. I keep on hearing good things about it. So that's the main game I'm going to play on the RP3 for the next little bit. And I've already played through the game like three freaking times by this point, but I actually started playing a bit of Final Fantasy III Remake. Do you ever do that? Where you have all these amazing new games, but then you just go back to playing some old game that you've played a ton of already? There's just something comforting about going back to a game that you know you'll enjoy, I suppose. And uh, that, that's it. That brings us to the end. <laughs> I've had a great time testing these PSP games, and I'm looking forward to playing more of them on the RP3. But now I'd like to hear from you. Did you have a PSP, or do you have one? What are your favorite PSP games? Or are you like me, and you skipped the PSP? Have you discovered any new favorite games, or hidden gems? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below.
And while you're down there, if you like the video, click that thumbs up button. Or if you didn't, click the thumbs down button, I suppose. Oh, and check out the link to my Discord server, if you do that sort of thing, in the description below. Lots of fun dweebs over there. Uh, that's it for me. As always, I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye